Hey guys, so I've got a new project to show you. This one's using the Raspberry Pi. It's going to be a bit of a long video, I'm afraid, because I'm going to run you through the Python code and I'm going to run you through the PHP that's associated with it. Now, what it is, is a, a social media notifier. I've done this with Arduino before, um, and I thought it'd be a great project to try and replicate on the Raspberry Pi. Um, the Raspberry Pi has sort of Ethernet built in, so it's great for this project, but I'm using it with a Wi-Fi dongle. Now, there's no real difference. It will still connect if you're just using Ethernet, but the, uh, the Wi-Fi is great. I'm making this for my office, so it's not for me personally, and it's running off the, the work, so Twitter and Facebook. I'm using the API in Twitter to connect and find out the Twitter ID of the last tweet we received. I'm storing that ID, and then when it checks again, if the, the ID is greater than the previous ID, then these illuminated photo frames, which I made before, you can find out about, um, it lights up. And I'm doing the same for Facebook, so if we get a new like on our Facebook page, that lights up. And the one at the end is a cup of tea. Actually, it's a mug. It's more like a coffee mug, but we like tea in this country, so we tend to have it in massive mugs. Um, it's all connected to the Raspberry Pi using the GPIO pins. So I've got a ribbon here, and I've got my uh, sort of... It's like a, like a cobbler, like the, the Adafruit cobbler, but uh, this one's made by a different company. I can't remember who exactly, but I covered it in my uh, Raspberry Pi unboxing, so you can take a look at that. Now, uh, it uses those, kicks out a signal to a transistor, which turns on one of these lights. It's pretty simple, um, so I will demo it now. Uh, the API Twitter, the API Twitter, the Twitter API has got rate limiting on it, so it gives you a certain number of requests every 15 minutes. So in my code, I've got delays so that it doesn't request more than it should. Now, I'm just going to make them all go off at once. So I've got a little web form. I've suspended the live function on these, so it will flash all of these at once, just so that you can see that it works. I'm using my phone, so I've got a small form online that I can just trigger this with. Now, because of the delay, we might have to wait a few seconds, so um, I'll fast forward through it. There we go. So they're all flashing. Thankfully, it's not so sunny now, so you can see it a bit better, but they'll flash through. Uh, it's about 30 cycles, and it uh, might be 29 actually, I'm not sure. And then they'll stay on for a period of time, so that you, you will get uh, a notification from it, I guess, if it's on for long enough. Um, they're just photos on the back of there. I don't know if you can see, but you can actually see the, the photo make behind there. But I've just printed those out and stuck them on the back. Right, so you can see I've got my Raspberry Pi here. Um, I've got it in this nice little acrylic case. That was only £3 from eBay, which is pretty cool. And it's connected via a ribbon cable to this uh, sort of GPIO out thing that I've been using, which is pretty awesome. It's got uh, sort of labels for all the, the pins and everything. Uh, and if I just move all of these over, because they're sort of limiting the movement of this, and I've got it attached to this little board here with some transistors on. Uh, they're tip 31As and a tip 122 because I've just had those lying around. There's no real relevance to any of that. Um, they're just the ones that I had lying around. Um, so the output of those goes to the negative on these and the positive is just over here. Now that comes from this plug here which is used for the LED lights. Now everything's powered using this USB hub, there's the Wi-Fi dongle and it all goes into the Raspberry Pi. So let's have a look at the code. Right so here we are in the Pi, I'm just VNCing into this Pi uh, because it's easier. Uh, it's a great way of using a Pi, if you've not done it you should. So I want to get to idle, whoops. So I'm just going to sudo idle, super user do idle. And then I'm going to want to open my file, which is this one here, Office Notifier. Ooh, not sure what was going on there. So here's my code. Now I'm using the GPIO stuff. Um, I'm importing time so that I can tell the, uh, the Pi to sleep and uh, I'm using URL lib 
Um, in fact, I'm using URL lib too, but I've imported both. I think it's necessary, but URL lib is sort of depreciated. So this method here, whoops, this method is uh, is the one that people use now. Um, I've put set warnings to false because when I run this, it's already running in the background. It's going to tell me it's it's already doing stuff, um, and I'm setting up the GPIO outputs. Right, so you can see the GPIO stuff here, and there's various functions that I've built in. So I've defined light as a function, and within it, there are lots of conditional statements. So within light here, I'm bringing in a variable called n, and uh, if n equals equals one, so if it is equal to one, um, then do this here. And it says for count, so this is a for loop in the range of zero to 30. So it's gonna do this 30 times. And it's going to say GPIO output high time sleep 0 0.5, which is uh, half a second, and then it's going to turn it on to low. So it's going to turn it on and off, on and off. And there's two sleeps there, so it's going to be a second between on and off. So it's on for half a second, and then it's off for half a second, on for half a second, off for half a second. And then once that's been completed, it turns it on for 45 seconds, and then it turns it off and then it will complete that function and go all the way to the bottom. Uh, but to trigger all of that, we've got at the bottom here, we've got, so this is an infinite loop. I've got while one uh, and it sets one of the pins, GPIO 22, to low. Now I've got a little LED on GPIO 22 just so that I can, um, I can see when it's uh, requesting something. Uh, it sleeps for 30 and then it runs run just here, this function I've defined. Now this function turns off all of the uh, all of the, the frames. They'll be off anyway but it's just to make sure that they're off um, just in case the program gets confused or interrupted at any point and then when this runs again it turns them all off and it sets the little LED to go high and that's just so I can see that it's requesting data then it says go for web now this is a function up here that i've defined and it says url and this is the url to the php file i've removed references to mine so that you you can't trigger it yourselves um not that you would i know that you're all good really um, and it says update equals url lib 2.url open url so that thing there dot read and then it reads what the php file is kicking back and it prints the update into uh, the output and then it says go equals int update. Now I'm receiving something back from the PHP file and I want to ensure that what I'm getting back is a number um, and if it isn't uh, I want it to try and convert it to a number. Now this plays havoc when uh, you try and request too much from the Twitter API and you get the rate limiting message. Um, so that's why I've put all the delays in there so that never happens. And then it says light and it sends the variable go into the light function. And that's basically what happens. It's pretty simple. Um, let me just show you something else. So if I just close that, I don't want to save it because I've, I've just changed something. So we'll close that. And then we're just going to open up the file manager and show you how I can automatically run this every time the Pi is turned on. So within config, in home Pi config, there's a folder called auto start. Now you can put things in here if you want to auto start them when you start the Pi up. My Pi automatically starts into the desktop um, environment so, so that I can sort of VNC in when I want to. Now if I just open this, I'll just open it in LeafPad. You can see in here we've got desktop entry, type application, name, office notifier, and then execute sudo, so super user do Python, and then it runs this. And so that runs every single time the Pi is switched on. Now let's take a look at the PHP code. Right, so here we are. Uh, this is the PHP. Um, I'm using the, I'm going to go with Jimbo on this here. The Jimbo sort of Twitter library PHP thing. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. Um, it's an easy way of interacting with uh, the Twitter API and it just means that you can throw in your secrets so you'll need to set up an app on uh, the developer site of the of twitter for your account now it's like a single user thing um, i explained this in another 
I explained this in another video about this so you can go and take a look at that for a bit more detail but um, it's pretty simple so just google this dude and uh, you'll be able to find out how to set all this stuff up but you'll need to use your secrets and your keys and stuff and I've taken out references to my own um, so what it does here it pulls in uh, the result from a request to the API to find the mentions timeline of the screen name of this user here um, but it uses your own thing so as long as you're authorized to see it you'll get a response um, it kicks out uh, I think JSON so then you need to uh, pull out the various data from that but not only that I have to deal with the Facebook thing and I have to deal with the drink thing as well so I'm using a database on my own server so that I can store these values and then compare them against the ones from the new request so down here I've uh, I've got all that kind of stuff here so I'm connecting to the database here you'll need to put your own details in because this is sitting on my server I'm using localhost um, so I'm connecting to it and then we've got various MySQL like queries here so from uh, the database that you need select everything where the ID is that blah 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 well it's not the database this is the table the database is specified up here um, and then we get the results this way with the Facebook thing, you're not using uh, using the public API, so I don't need to put in any kind of consumer keys or secrets and stuff. So you just have this request here, and it gets the the user object, and you get the fan count, and uh, you get sort of the ID of the page and stuff. And you just need to put your ID in just there, where I've put two dashes. Then I'm decoding the stuff, and then using some conditional statements down here. So if report fig, now that's the sort of the standard figure that's going to come out of this and go to my Raspberry Pi. Uh, if, if drink ID, and drink ID is here, and it's selected from the row from this, uh, from this table, if drink ID is not equal to zero, then um, we'll do this. So usually when I update it, it will become a one. Um, and when it's a one, it gets sent through here and added to report fig. Now I want report fig to sort of concatenate onto the other things. So we've got if now ID equals last ID, and this is the Twitter bit. So this reads the Twitter object, the JSON object, um, and it adds it onto the report fig here. And again, we do it for the Facebook thing, thing here. Now down the bottom, I need to reset these values once it's been read. So I change them. I, I set them to the values that I've just read so that they're always up to date and then I send out the, the figure in an echo statement. I also record it in a text file just so that I've got a reference when I'm trying to debug anything. Now those can be taken out in the final version. I, don't, I won't really need those. And that's basically the PHP. I'll make this available so that you can download it if you want to play around with it. And if anyone's got any questions, feel free to ask. But I think that's about it. So thank you very much for watching and listening. And if you have any questions, um, I'll be happy to answer them or debug your stuff if you need it. So thanks. Bye.